Well, good morning. We did end up sleeping at this uh, 404 truck stop in Tennessee. The, uh, the food wasn't that great. I think they're understaffed. So they have to pre-make a lot of the stuff. So I think that takes away from it. They got help on it. Help wanted stuff all over the place. Oh. So we have uh, about nine and a half hours left to get there. And I want to stop and take one more shower before the weekend. So where we plan on stopping is a uh, little truck stop, but they don't have uh, they don't have showers, so we'll probably stop along the way. Lita says we need to pick up some more water and uh, probably pick up a few groceries. And we'll be good to go for Monday. So uh, let me knock out a free trip and I'll see you guys uh, see you guys later. Alright guys, we made it. We made it. We're in uh, Plymouth, Indiana at a pilot. Fat Butts is acting like she really has to go, so I'm going to let her go and I'll show you guys around. Oh, she did. She really did have to pee. Oh. I'm so glad we made it. Man, with the, uh, so these tires sitting on this block up here. Fat Butts, you stay by. Hey. With these, uh, with these tires on these uh, blocks that they put up here. Um, it doesn't matter how hard I crank these chains down, uh, this tire would squish. So this would bounce and kind of move around, which is kind of freaky looking, but I mean, I guess it worked, huh? So, wow, well, she has to pee again. Uh, it's a pretty big truck stop. I was, I was afraid that it was gonna be full. Hold on, let me finish with her and then I'll show you guys around. All right, I guess she's done. You stay close to me. I don't know why the guys are parked over on the side there. When I pulled in, I was like, oh great, here we go. We're gonna have to park on the road. But I mean, look at all these, uh, hey, hey, you stay by me. Look at all these empty spots. I mean, some of these are reserved from there over, but there's a lot of empty spots here. I'm not really sure why they're parked on the side over there. I mean, maybe one good thing would be you'd be closer to the bathroom or whatever, but I don't know. I just feel that's un that's unnecessary. So, anyways, I don't know if we're gonna cook tonight or what. I didn't even see what this pilot has to offer. Uh, we did do some grocery shopping. Flip this around. We did do some grocery shopping in, at Walmart on the way here, and we stopped by at a TA and got fuel and another shower um wow i wonder what he's got in there you know what that is that's a ramp that's either a land yeah that's a landing ramp for uh i bet there's dirt bikes in there nula hey come over here i bet that's what that is i bet they have a ramp inside there and they set up a ramp and that's a landing ramp it's a freestyle ramp I guarantee it that's pretty slick. Or maybe they jumped the side by side. I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know what they got. I mean, it's a big truck stop. I don't know why they're parked over there. 
Anyways, yeah, let me run back to the truck, see what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get out a, a bit, um, for time reference, today is the day that I posted about the dump valve on the trailer and doing the shocks and stuff like that. Now I talked to you guys the other day about how I'd hit my button and it would dump both bags. So after doing some research, I'm thinking the valve that I put in there isn't really rated for what I'm doing. I think what's happening is there was there was so much weight. I haven't tried it with this load. I guess I could try it with this load. I think this is 35,000 pounds. There was so much weight on the trailer that when I dumped that bag, and I'll have to show you guys how that how that switch works too. It was forcing, there's like a piston inside there. It was forcing that piston over because um, it's like magnetized or something. I don't know. I'll show you guys when I go back to the truck. I'll take it apart and show you guys how, how it kind of works. But I'm thinking the valve is, it says it's rated for 120 PSI. But I think it's rated for 120 PSI so it doesn't dump out. I think once you switch it to make it dump out, I think it can... I think that's what I think so I'm gonna look for uh, uh, so basically the uh, the dump valves that they want you to use are like anywhere from 200 to 300 dollars I got those for like 20 bucks off of Amazon thought I could make it work obviously not so or it's because they're made in China let's say China I'm not sure anyways let's run back to the truck fat butts and go check on mama hey come on Good morning, baby girls. Why are you looking so weird? Mama making some coffee. Yes. Sunday morning. We're gonna uh, not do anything today. Sit in the truck. Sit in the truck. Um, switch this around. You guys can see my pretty face. Ooh, my hair is getting crazy. Get that Donald Trump come over again. <laughs> Hey, what do you guys think about that, by the way? You miss them yet? Mother... <laughs> probably not. They're probably still brainwashed, huh? Anyways, uh, yeah, Sunday morning. Air conditioner did great last night. Um, it's got a feature where that thing will uh, move up and down. But it seems like ever since I took the cover off to figure out the water hose drain, which I'll have to fix that when I get home. I'm not messing with that. It's working. It's whatever. We stick the hose out the window, right? Whatever. It's. I mean, we can still do that and not. I mean, if we're not ghetto, we're not trucking, right? They're gonna look up the the word ghetto in South Georgia hot uh, and South Georgia hot shots gonna pop no, up. It's gonna be redneck. It's not gonna be ghetto. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be redneck. Oh, is it more of a redneck thing than a ghetto thing? I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe. So. <laughs> Anyways, that's been doing good. Anyways, there's a, uh, it like, you could set it to swing up and down, and now it doesn't do that for some reason. There's a little motor that attaches to that thing. I don't know. Kind of sucks. It is what it is. So, oh my gosh. Look at this. <laughs> it's crazy. I can't believe how lazy I was that I wouldn't go get a haircut the, the three weeks that we were off. Right? I don't want to say that. Anyways, that uh that motorcycle ramp thing that I was looking at yesterday that I thought was was a landing. Uh the ramp was right next to it and I didn't even see it because I was telling them I'm like that looks like a motorcycle landing or yeah. a dirt bike landing and I didn't see the ramp, so anyways Lita just made us some coffee. She got some uh cinnamon buns. Some already cooked cinnamon buns, but we're gonna try to throw them in the air fryer real f for a couple of, what do you think, a couple seconds, heat them up real fast? Yeah. And then uh, we bought some steaks for tonight. And then, what do we get, steaks and tater tots? Yeah. I mean, we could make some shrimp, too. Yeah, we, we could have, make some shrimp. We could have surf and turf. Ooh, that'd be nice. Yeah. The steaks we got are decent size, though. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if you guys, did I ever talk about this little cooler I bought a long time ago just to keep our waters cool? Because our freezer freezes. So we got this to keep our waters cool. Lita brought some Halloween cereal. Oh, yeah. It's 
Chocula. Yeah, Halloween cereal. Yeah. Some cow and Chocula. So we bought some milk and now we're now we're keeping some milk in there. So it's kind of nice having a bowl of cereal. I mean, they only bring it out during Halloween. Well, I'm not just talking about that box of cereal, but like I eat cereal when I when we go home. Like there's there's cereal I like to eat. And sometimes I do miss it on the road, you know? You can only eat so many breakfast sandwiches. Breakfast sandwiches. Sometimes you just want a simple bowl of cereal. I don't know. Of course, this last time when we were home, Lita pretty much made pancakes and waffles every day. It was nice. Mm -hmm. Did you bring that waffle maker? No. No? <laughs> that would be a mess in this truck. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way. All right, maybe we'll see you all a little later. Toaster strudels in the air fryer. Oh, it's exciting. I haven't had a toaster strudel in years, fat butts. So here's why I think this thing isn't working. So I think this uh, works off of a magnet somehow. And it uses the air pressure blowing in through these valves here to push on these diaphragms to to slide this back and forth depending on how you have it. And I think the air pressure, I don't think it has enough power to hold it back with a load on the trailer. See these little, um, you can kind of see the angle in there where the air will kind of push in there and push it either way. And I don't know if you guys can see that or not. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. Basically, this sits on top of that. This sits on this pole, on this post. Somehow energizes that, which runs down into this somehow. God, I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it is now Sunday night. It's about 5.45, and you know how we like to do on the weekends. Uh, we stopped by Walmart the other day, picked up a couple of steaks, which, uh, by the way, were expensive. Oh, I've already cleaned this. I don't even need these paper towels. Man, this thing fogs up so easy. I just, I just wiped that thing down. It was already clean. We must have already cleaned it, Babs. Um, man, it was like, uh, 20 bucks for these two little steaks. Man, everything has gone up in price, huh? Thank you, Joe Biden. He is trying to ruin America. And if you don't believe that, you've been living under a rock. What's up, baby? You got the oh, you got the steaks ready for me? Look at Lita's little outfit. Oh, I don't know if we've shown them that new tattoo you got. Oh, spooky, spooky. Um, yeah, so look, 20 bucks for these two little steaks. Um, honestly, I don't know what uh, meat, what it usually costs. But uh, Lita usually does all the shopping. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is that guy painting his truck over there? He's painting his truck over there. He's spray painting his truck. Hope that overspray don't get on my truck, on my chassis. Um, anyways, is that pretty expensive? 20 bucks for these two steaks? I don't know. Everybody's telling me prices are going up, so I'm going to say prices are going up. So, uh, I just got done editing. I just got done editing the video that we thought the truck was fixed. We went to go pick it up, and I had to take it back. So that's how close I am to being up to date. Like, I am almost out of footage. In fact, the footage that I'm adding to this video 
is the last bit of footage I have on my hard drive. All the other footage that I have from that point on is still on this camera. So that's probably a little exciting for you guys, but terrifying for me. You know, I like that cushion just in case something happens. You know, I don't like I don't like some footage or I want to go on vacation or anything really. I like to have that cushion, you know. I hate being a monk behind, but at the same time I'm terrified about running out of footage. So so you guys are basically gonna get to see me put salt and pepper on my steaks now. This is kind of hard to do because I'm not left-handed. I'm holding the camera with my right hand. Bam. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. And I, I can already see the comments. So this is in the future, right? Everybody's gonna say, ah, see, I told you, show. You should have got a different truck. This is an Eaton Fuller which every single semi truck comes with if you're a man unless you like those automatics <coughs> ratman <coughs> no i understand ratman it's cool you're old you can't be pushing in the clutch we get it buddy we we get it no i'm just i'm just joking honestly i don't know if i found an automatic at a decent price I might buy it you know Lita can drive a stick but an automatic would be a lot easier for her. you know and this this transmission just isn't shifting like my old one did um, I still can't get it to go into gear like it's even worse now like from a dead stop it grinds like crazy when I go to put it in gear. Like I push the clutch in all the way. I don't know if it needs to be adjusted. It's been like this since day one. And I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, I would take it back to the guy. I don't want that guy working on my truck ever again. I am willing to pay another shop to fix the problem than to ever have to deal with that guy ever again. Ever again. You know, I still haven't left my Google my Google review, which I need to. You know, people need to know. People need to know he doesn't know what he's doing. And I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but when I went to go pick up our truck, that was the nastiest and most unprofessional shop. Oh, this isn't working. This isn't getting hot. Is this uh, extension cord not plugged in? Right now. Completely unprofessional. There was just stuff everywhere. I mean, it was just completely, completely unprofessional. I, I can't believe the mess of the shop that that was in. Is this getting hot now? Yeah, I think it's getting hot now. You know? Like... I've never seen a shop in such a disaster as that one was. I don't know how they get anything done. Like when I go home and I work on my Mustang, my shop is a complete mess too. But I have one car in there and there's one person in there working and it's me. So if I leave tools out or there's a mess, it's not like I have to worry about somebody mixing my parts up with theirs or anything like that. There's one car in there, it's done. When you're running a shop, he had one, two, like four bays. There was two bays facing one way, and there was two bays facing this way, right? I don't know. I think what I'll do is take my truck this next time we're home, which we plan on being home next weekend, around next weekend, taking my truck to the same shop that we took it to when uh, the crankcase filter was messing up because I mean their, their shop was immaculate um, that's been my best experience so far out of all these shops so 
Anyways, we need to throw these steaks on, I think. I think this I think this George Foreman heats up fast enough. You know, I could probably close this and it would heat up even faster. Uh, APU's doing great. Uh, air conditioner's doing fantastic. Everything else seems to be running good. I mean, uh, knock on wood. I got under the trailer here and I was uh, earlier. I was playing around with the leveling valve. I think what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to set this trailer to sit up a little bit higher. That way when I find the dump valve that works, which it seems like it's sitting up higher right now than it usually does. I don't think it ever sits up this high. But I need to adjust it to where this set of axles is up high enough to where those tires aren't hitting that metal. Because then they just kind of like scrub and it's just a mess you know so he's got an American flag so he's he's doing something right over there spray paint your truck at a truck stop is uh that's something we would do looks like he's got two coils so our next load I don't know if I told you guys or not but we have to go pick up two coils that are supposed to be uh 36,000 pounds so it's probably like two babyish coils I don't know how big those coils are but that's what we got. We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do two coils, and we're running to. Uh, I believe we're running to somewhere in Virginia with it. Somewhere in Virginia, I believe. So, anyways, let me get these steaks cooked. Lead is actually inside with the air fryer. She's gonna fry up some uh, shrimp and some tater tots. So we're gonna have some. Uh, Right, you're doing shrimp and tater tots, babs? Uh, I could do that. Uh, maybe onion rings. Oh, shrimp and onion rings? What's that called? So, uh, what was that word you used? Surf and turf. Surf and turf. You want some surf and turf fat butts? Man, I tell you what, we have that thing set to 68 right now, and it gets pretty chilly sitting in here. Uh, I set it to like 64 earlier, and I was freezing. So, anyways, I babbled enough. I'm still happy I'm in a semi truck. Everything that's happened, I'm still happy, honestly. Um, I think we will start keeping an eye out for a newer truck because we're really trying to get out to Utah. And starting next year, California won't allow you in California with a truck that's more than 10 years old. I know everybody's like, oh, just stay out of California. I was doing really good bouncing from Utah to California and back. That's why I want to run into California. I know it's a, a, it's it's basically like going into China, but that's that's what I found that I might have to do when I'm out there. Uh, once we do get out there, I'm gonna work really hard on getting some direct contacts and uh, working it that way. So, anyways, let me get these steaks on. How is it? Good. Is it? How's yours, fat butts? Oh, you haven't been fed yet, have you? Patiently waiting. Oh. Well, we have arrived. Uh, we woke up at 5.30, blah, 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 5.30 this morning. Uh, left at 6. We're here at like 6.30ish. This place is massive. I mean, they're building campers and RVs and stuff everywhere. Everywhere. So, we're next in line. You just pull up underneath this crane, unchain, and they just pick them off. So we're just taking our straps off now. 
it's kind of dark I don't know if they're gonna be able to see anything and then uh, we'll pull in when we're next Now we've got uh, about an hour and 15 minutes of deadhead to run over and uh, we got to pick up two coils. What's it supposed to be like, 35,000 pounds? It's less than 40, I know that. And then after we pick this up uh, is when I'll tell Mason to start looking for another one. Um, if I have enough driving distance between picking up and dropping off to look for a load, I won't rush to look for a load, just in case something happens to the load that I'm gonna go pick up. So, that's the plan. There wasn't Amish people there, like, I, I figured it was gonna be a bunch of, or uh, Mennonites. Whatever, you know? So, I think Lita seen one, but it wasn't even in the, the place where we were at. It was at a, another building down the road. Here, Another sure. factory. Um, also forgot to mention that um, so we took I-74 into Indiana. I-74 is where the truck driver um, ran into the way station. And everybody's been wondering, which I don't know, this, this is kind of old, so people are probably already know what happened. But he definitely fell asleep. 99% sure he fell asleep because you come around a bend and at the end of that bend goes right into the way station So he was going around the bend probably dozed off or something medical maybe But uh, dozed off and just completely destroyed that building Super sad It sucks man. That's uh Even if even if you get your sleep at least for me, just even thinking about it, just driving at nighttime sometimes, man, is it's rough. Especially, I think it happened at 5 o'clock in the morning. So, I don't know if he had just woke up and started driving, or if he was about to end his shift from driving. I don't know. It's, it's the things like not have enough parking, which is what pushes people to uh, drive different hours. So... And I wish these uh, receivers and um, shippers had more hours. I mean, a lot of them have ridiculous hours that are, you know, oh, we'll unload you from eight o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock in the morning. It's like, what kind of what kind of shipping and receiving hours are those? Or they don't unload. Or they don't unload that day. It's crazy, man. The thing I've realized about at least flatbed. I don't know if everything else works this way is everybody needs it there yesterday nobody knows it's coming and they don't want to load you or unload you when you get there this was around this truck yeah why not 
Whee! Uh. All right, we'll see you when we get there.